Hey guys, it's Lee here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a storage wallet or storage address so that you can send and receive storage coin. Um, so to get into it, I'll, I'll go through the, the whole process and break it down and make it super simple for you. So storage coin itself um, is actually a counter party token so it doesn't actually have its own separate um, blockchain or network and because of that it also doesn't have its own dedicated wallet and um, that might change in the future but um, for right now uh, what you need to do it to uh, access or use storage or create a wallet is you're basically going to be using the the counterparty platform so I know that sounds a little bit complicated to start, but um, like I said, I'll break it down for you. Um, so this is what they call a counter wallet, and this is basically an online wallet that runs on top of the, the counterparty uh, platform. And here you can see, uh, I've got this address here, this is just a name, and um, this is one of my receiving addresses. And within this, I've got several uh, different account balances. So here the obvious one is that you can see they've got Bitcoin there. I've also got a pending transaction. I'll come back to that in just a moment. And you see here, I've got some storage in this account. Um, and further down, I've got um, another address or another like wallet address, um, a little bit of a Bitcoin in that and also some more storage. Uh, further down, another just sort of a third wallet, but I'm not really using that one um, at the moment. So what I'll show you is this address here, you will see is like, what it basically functions as on the counterparty network, it basically functions as like a multi-function address. So with this same single address, I can send to it um, counterparty or I can send to it Bitcoin or I can also send it storage. Um, so it's basically one single address, but it can use for um, multi uh, currencies that are based upon um, the counterparty um, network or blockchain. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to create a counter wallet and then you'll be able to send and receive storage. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is go to Google and you wanna to go to, sorry, I'm just gonna bang this mic a little bit here. Apologies. Sorry, that was not forward thinking. Uh, so you wanna to go to counter wallet. I actually end up putting the mic right in front of the keyboard. Uh, so you go to uh, type in counter wallet in Google and the address that you want to use is this counter wallet .io. Uh, There's and that's the one that I use um, What it will do is it will come up with a page like this and it will just says which uh, server or did you want to use for the actual uh, The counter wallet and there's a couple that you can choose from uh, the ones that I use is the official counterparty counter wallet server so you click on that and it brings you up with a page that just looks like this. Pretty, pretty plain, pretty basic. Uh, the button that you want to press is the big green button in the middle that says create new wallet. If you click on that, what you'll get is a box up here, which essentially this is like a passphrase box. It's um, 12 random words. Um, what these 12 words are going to be is whatever's in here becomes your password. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you can hit this um, as many times as you like and you can create, you know, one that's sort of suitable for you. It really doesn't matter. Um, I'd probably just go with the first one. And then what you're going to, it's going to give you a, a series of keywords and this becomes your password. So what you want to do is then you want to copy it. So just select it, then copy it and you want to paste this somewhere or you can like, you know, write it down by hand or something, but just double check it quite a few times and make sure that you've definitely got the right um, set of words. I'm just gonna paste it in here in a notepad. I'm just gonna minimize that. Uh, it's already copied to my clipboard as well. And then it just have to uh, press the acknowledgement to say that you've recorded it some way. Make sure you, just before you leave this page, just double check and make sure that you've accurately recorded it. Make sure you don't have any mistakes. All the words are exactly as they're supposed to be. I normally just copy and paste it to a notepad file. That's the easiest way I saved it. But um, like I say, you can also handwrite it. Um, the reason why I'm just telling you to just go over this again is because if you lose this, there's there's no, um, there's no recovery options. There's no forgotten my password option or anything like that. If you lose this, that that's, that's completely it. So make sure you do it properly. 
um, and you might you know even want to log out and then log back in afterwards just to make sure you've definitely got it so I'm just going to continue here um, this is new uh, to avoid having to type the full password you can have a quick access URL um, I'm just going to go skip this there. I'm just going to go so it just goes to normal uh, just click OK um, so now we're back to this sort of main page um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click here and then I'm going to paste which is going to paste our secret passphrase in and then I'm going to go to open wallet and there's just some terms and conditions there I will accept those okay and that's great so what it's done is it's actually created a first address for us to use and this is basically our new address and we have the address over here and we can use this address for uh, primarily receiving Bitcoin but we also can use exactly the same address for receiving storage so I'm going to show you how that works as well what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this address Ooh. if I actually do it click it again I'm just going to copy this address down and I'm just going to put it with this um, notepad file here just so I kind of know what's what. I'm also going to save it as Ooh. so I've just saved that as counter wallet. I'm just going to close that now. Okay, so this is our uh, uh, our account, our wallet and our address which we can uh, use to receive storage. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm just going to go back to my original uh, counter wallet account and then I'm just going to send some storage across to this account just so you can see how the process actually works. Um, I was actually waiting for a pending transaction so I'm just going to pause the video now, uh, wait for that pending transaction to complete and then I'll come back and we'll do the actual transaction side of things. Okay guys, that pending balance is now uh, completed so we can do what we wanted to do. Um, so what I was actually waiting for was this uh, Bitcoin uh, balance to actually update. Um, I just deposited a small amount uh, into it. The reason I've done that is because um, I wanted to send some storage from this account to the new account that we created. But in order to do that, we actually have to have a little bit of Bitcoin to cover the transaction fees. So that's something to be mindful of. So obviously you can put storage into your uh, new wallet and it won't, you know, there won't be any actual transaction fees for that. But once your funds are actually in the wallet, even though it's a storage coin and the, uh, the storage token, if you want to send it out, you need a little bit of uh, Bitcoin to actually send it. Out, out of this particular transaction, I hope that makes sense. And the cost is 0 0.0005 uh, Bitcoin, it should uh, confirm. I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, so one of the other things I did was um, I just opened up our new wallet in Chrome just so I can sort of go uh, back and forth between them without getting uh, logged out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna copy this uh, address. So this is our new address. Uh, I'm just going to close that. So we've just copied this address here. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my main account, uh, click on the storage uh, token. Uh, if you click on this little down arrow here, and then if you go to send, and it'll ask you for the address, which actually says it's a Bitcoin address, but it's because all of these uh, currencies are on the counterparty network. So it treats them kind of all like Bitcoin. Um, and then the amount that we want to send, I'm just gonna send uh, 10. So we're sending from our address to this address, we are sending 10, just double checking that. And I'm just gonna hit send. Um, and then we just need to wait for it to refresh on the new wallet. So you can see this got this little um, animation here, which means that is uh, a pending change. Uh, if we go to our new wallet, we should see the same pending change there. Oh, and also there, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we just need to wait for this to update. So you can see that it's, originally we only had the two, uh, the Bitcoin and the uh, counterparty tokens there, but you can see now that we've sent some storage over, it's created a new little 
uh, drop down and uh, balance for us. And um, just as soon as that completes, um, because it is going through the uh, the Bitcoin network, it will take a little while to update. Um, but then that will give us our new balance here. So I think that's basically everything. Uh, what I will just, I don't think it will show you straight away. I was going to say, if I just show you now, it should, yeah. So, so for example, um, this, this balance is still pending a 10, but just to show you if we, we wanted to send that 10 back, for example, um, we wouldn't be able to do it because we wouldn't have enough Bitcoin, um, to cover the, the return fees. So, uh, yeah, like I said previously, um, just be mindful that obviously your account or your, your wallet address can receive, um, storage at no cost. But if you want to send it back, um, obviously you're going to need to send the storage, but also you're going to need a little bit of Bitcoin um, to cover the actual fees, the transaction fees. So just be mindful of that. Um, and I think that's about it for this video. That's kind of everything that I wanted to show you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, leave them in the comments box below. Um, and like I say, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, give it a like and a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, and if you like more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel. Um, I do upload them on a semi-regular basis, and there'll be lots of similar content, hints and tips, that kind of thing. Okay, guys, till next time. Thanks for watching.